us for our raw review. Uh, so this week's uh, was the 22nd of October 2019 review of Monday Night Raw. So, uh, how did I think Monday went? Um, okay, um, I still think they're on a showcase sort of Raw. If that's what if that means anything, um, and it sort of showed with what what came up. Uh, I was also quite surprised there was not a single women's match on the card at all. There were no women um, on the show at all, except for Selena Vega, but wrestling-wise, there was no one. So, I don't really know. I think it's because uh, they're sort of gearing up now for Crown Jewel. And as we know, uh, the women ain't on Crown Jewel. Uh, so, I don't think they're as important. Uh, they're as... Well, they don't see it as, as important. So, first, let's kick it off. So, the first thing we get, we get um, Ric Flair comes out. Obviously, Ric Flair's the man. He has been. But he is getting... He's getting rather old now. Um, I think putting him in the limelight like they are, um, you know, it's it's a hard one. It is a real hard one. I like seeing Ric Flair, but he stumbled and, and spluttered and, and got a bit confused uh, with, with what was going on. And he done an interview a bit like Ultimate Warrior where, where didn't, I didn't really understand... What he was trying to say, it was a bit muffled. Um, I just don't like seeing Ric Flair like this. Um, and that's the sort of vibe I got. Anyway, we were on there because we uh, Ric Flair was picking his last team. So he's Team Hogan and Team Flair and Crown Jewel. Uh, obviously, Hogan's got his team. Flair's got four of his team. He was picking the fifth one, which happened to be uh, Drew McIntyre. So obviously, Drew McIntyre comes out. Uh, and then we have an improv match between uh, Drew McIntyre and Ricochet. I've got to say, it was actually a really good match. It was, it was a good match. Very, very good match. Um, I would say that it was pay-per-view quality. There were some on, these, some on this card that were actually pay-per-view quality matches. Uh, but yeah, it was a pay-per-view quality match. It was backwards and forwards. It was, really, it, it was a good match. It was a really good match. They put on a, a really good match. Drew McIntyre wins. It was obvious that, for me anyway, it was obvious that he was going to win just because they were pushing. Ric Flair chose him. Ricochet come down. There was a few times when I thought, oh, maybe Ricochet might win. But uh, no, uh, Drew McIntyre wins. Picks up the win. Um, then there's... Um, uh, I can't remember now. Yeah, well, it was a while ago. It wasn't. It was a day ago. Uh, yeah, so... Um, there was a segment with um, with Jerry Lawler that had like a garden furniture in the ring. <laughs> it, it really was. There was like a, a garden furniture bench in the ring. Uh, Zavi uh, with Ravi. Ravi comes down and talks about Lana and Bobby Lashley, who interrupt them. They're having some romantic dinner. I can't believe this is still being pushed. It's almost like they don't really have anything for Lashley. And they want to use Lana. It's it's a bit bizarre. That one thing my wife did notice is that obviously they're having troubles or whatever. Uh, and he goes on about he's still wearing his wedding ring. And my wife noticed that Lana is still wearing her wedding ring as well. Obviously we know it's a bit of a storyline. But anyway, it, it, it's quite obvious that what's going on. Anyway, uh, they're at a restaurant and Ravi says he knows where their restaurant is. And goes off. Um, later in the show, um, there is a segment in the restaurant where Ravi beats um, Bobby Lashley and the tables go everywhere and he gets ar arrested. Let's just put it that way. Um, obviously building up. So I don't know whether this is building up to Crown Jewel or whether this is building up to Survivor Series. I don't really know. But it looks like this is going to continue. And I don't really know how or why this is going on in the 21st century. I don't really know. Obviously, it worked years ago. And WWE have done many storylines like this. But it just doesn't work nowadays. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, we, we have 
Alistair Black next. So he does a, a short promo, then comes to the ring. He is fighting a local boy called Jason Reynolds. And he's quite a big lad. And I thought, oh, this is going to be an easy win for uh, Alistair Black. But actually, this Jason Reynolds, who no fan knows. I don't even know. He's not part of WWE. Even the commentators like, oh, he's a nobody. He actually beats down on Alistair Black uh, quite a bit because he's quite a big fella. And I thought, oh, Alistair Black's going to come in, do a few moves, win, quick win. But it wasn't a quick match. It's not as quick as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was just a, a sort of a throwaway to build uh, Alistair Black. So they seem to be building him now and building him up. So he's going against these local lads, jobbers. Uh, we've had this all before throughout WWE, so we know what the end game is on this. Um, then we get um, a backstage segment with our truth and the 24-7 title, who who bumps into the Singh brothers. Uh, I think it's uh, Sunli, Sunli Singh who pins um, our truth and is now the new 24-7 champion. Um Later on, he uh, Archery finds them and he pins the wrong one because obviously they're twins, they look very similar. Uh, he pins the wrong one and he, he realises there was two of them and there's this sort of comedy banter um, sort of between them. So there's that. Um, yeah, it was okay. It's nice to see a 24 7 title on there as well. So that was really cool. Uh, then we get a really, really good match. So we have uh, Andronde versus Sinkara. Sinkara's been out for a year of injury. He comes back. I thought they may have pushed him a little bit because they did uh, in Mexico. And I know they're trying to sort of push that uh, um, El Paso and stuff like that. So uh, he comes out to the ring as well. Uh, it's a fairly good match, but um, he's and Sin Cara has been out. Uh, and like I said, they've been a re it was a really, really good match. Very, very good match. Uh, but these two have fought many times before. But yeah, so I... I I just thought, once again, Sin Cara's back in that routine of getting beaten and stuff like that. So, obviously, Andrade wins. Sin Cara loses. It was a bit of a shame. I would have liked maybe a, a DQ from uh, Ali Zelina Vega coming in, but that didn't happen. Uh, Andrade wins clean. Um, yeah. Uh, then we get a, a tag team match between, obviously, the new tag team, the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Obviously, they've been teaming for a while now. Um, this was a fairly okay match. A uh, very quick win for the Viking Raiders, though. It was obvious that they were going to win. They're sort of building up now. Then um, there was a really, a really good segment, actually, with Shelton Benjamin and... Uh, Rey Mysterio. So Rey Mysterio is a raw superstar. He comes out. He starts talking. Shelton Benjamin interrupts him and sort of does this little shoot on him, which is really, really good. And they built it really well. Um, and it was... it. He hit some truth like we've all been saying. So, you know, he comes out and he starts... He goes, maybe I'm going to get a title match now. Pushes Rey Mysterio and goes, that's an intercontinental title. Slaps him and then goes, that's a US title shot. You know, sort of parodying what happened with Brock Lesnar. So Brock Lesnar came down, obviously, a couple of weeks ago now. Beat up Rey Mysterio and then on SmackDown gets a title match. Why? We all are the same. So sh this segment was really, really good. Um, obviously, this brings out um, Kane Valenska, um, who comes down and sort of... Um, sort of does a little bit of wrestling, but more pumble handles... Uh, Shelton Benjamin on the map uh, to end that segment. It was it is what it is, but I liked the the Rey Mysterio and the Shelton Benjamin segment. It it came across really well, and I did like that. Um, then we get the Universal Champion Seth Rollins versus Humberto Calazar. I think that's Cala Calar. I think that's it, it. I can't remember it now. This was one of the draws, one of the drafts that they did. And uh, he was brought over from 205 Live, I do believe. Uh, I'm not a big fan of 205 Live. I've not really seen many of them. So I didn't really know who this guy was. That match was 
that match and uh, the Drew McIntyre were the best two matches of the night. Uh, I thought, you know, he wasn't going to do too well. Maybe this is going to be an easy win for Seth Rollins. But it was a really, it was a really, really, really good match. A really good match. Uh, and maybe him going up against Seth Rollins sort of shows it. Obviously, Seth Rollins wins. He is the Universal Champion. It would have been a real big shock if he had lost. Uh, there was no interference from Fire Flo uh, from uh, Bray Wyatt or The Fiend, though he is on SmackDown, uh, so I don't really know what's going on with that at the moment. Obviously, with Crown Jewel and everything else. Uh, then we're supposed to now. I'm going to say this that at the start it was always, uh, and on social media they promoted a uh, a six man tag match. So the OC versus the Street Profits with a mystery partner. Um, so everyone was waiting. That was the. Um, the main event, so we get the Street Profits come out. I thought, okay, so who's he going? Who they're going to be with? Then the OC come out, and we get just a standard tag team match. So I don't really know what happened there, what was going on, but we get a standard tag team match. Uh, it was fairly good. The Street Profits, uh, I've been watching them on NXT. They're only really, really good anyway. Um, and then right towards the end of the match, um, AJ Styles gets sort of ejected from the ring. As he's getting ejected, um, Kevin Owens comes out and stunners AJ to obviously stop the interference. Um, the Street Profits win. And then the Street Profits go into the crowd, obviously, to celebrate. But no Kevin Owens. So Ke was Kevin Owens their secret partner? And if he was, why was... This advertised as a six-man tag match when it was just a normal tag match. I don't know. It was just bizarre ending um, to it. And why did he, Kevin Owens take a long time to come out? Obviously, he's explained it on Facebook and, and the other social media sites and on their website now. But it was just, um, yeah, it, it, we had some really good matches, but ended on a really bum note. Obviously, the Street Profits won, but... It was supposed to be a, a free on, and it was supposed to be a mystery partner. So I don't really know. I don't know that was going on with that. But anyway, that was my review for Monday Night Raw. Thank you for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and click to subscribe. We will see you on Saturday for SmackDown Review, and we'll see you then.